Okay. Hello everyone. I am absolutely chuffed to have a fellow Welsh person and also one of the most talented social media people that I've ever met on this video talking to you about social media for Social Media Managers Day. So we've got Owen Williams from Simul, which is a social media agency. And Owen, rather than me try and kind of sum up your whole life in a couple of sentences, tell us a bit about you and what you do. Oh, that's Helen, that's very kind. Um, and good to be with you as well on Social Media Managers Day. Um, so, hey, um, I, as you say, Managing Director of Simul. We are a social media agency and consultancy. We make content for clients, broadcast clients, um, a, the third sector, all sorts of clients, corporate clients. Um, we, I, I formerly, um, I was head of social media at BBC One. Um, and prior to that, BBC Wales, and just before leaving the BBC, I was head of editorial strategy for BBC Content Social, a division that oversees all social activity, BBC One, BBC Two, BBC iPlayer, BBC Four, BBC Master Brand, BBC Comedy, oh gosh, it goes on and on. So yeah, I was I was there writing some big strategic um, uh, papers, and that's my background, basically. Prior to that, I was, uh, you know, I was in television production and social media didn't really exist prior to that so it's um so yeah a long convoluted history in these in these dark arts and basically other than if you were doing social media for like a whiskey brand or um something like that you where's this going had the, the <laughs> coolest career possible like is there any more fun job than working for the bbc um it, it, it has its moments, but when the wins come, they are very, very big wins. Um, and, you know, you're talking hundreds of millions of views and pieces of content you were across, you know. So it's, it's it, 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 it partially it comes from the scale of the brands you run, but it also comes from just being awash with um, interesting people who think in similar ways to you or conversely challenge you in some way and that's that's always good creative minds being together is always fun more difficult over zoom but that's what that's what that's what the world is challenging us to do isn't it yeah definitely well thinking about that challenging part of it you're at a point in your career where you are well respected you've got all of that kind of amazing work behind you so maybe being challenging and kind of helping people see the way it should be done more creatively comes a bit more naturally but if you're kind of thinking about the, the younger you as a social media manager, um, what was it like? Like, how how do you feel like the job has has changed for you and, and your career has gone? It's that's that's a really, really good question. The, the point, I guess, I guess one of the things is, you know, I've been doing this for what since social was a boy um i've been <laughs> doing this you know you and i've been in this field for quite a while now not not wishing to denigrate anyone's age here but um, we've been we've been doing this a while hell um the, i think that i think the, and you will feel this i think as well we've 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 evolved with it i mean when i started when i started making content on facebook video functionality was not a thing there were no videos on Facebook, so we've 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 grown with it, you know. Um, Facebook's business manager system just wasn't a thing; it didn't exist, you know. Pages have arrived since I've been running Facebook uh, accounts and Facebook channels, and um, you know, it, groups have come and gone and evolved again. And forgive me for scratching my eye while I'm doing this. Um, but but the the it's just the, the, the platforms have evolved with our careers. So in terms of advice for um, and, and, and the, the other thing, I guess, is that the, the ability to be, you can now have a defined role as a social marketer, or you can have a defined role as a, as a community manager, or you can have a defined role as a, as a social strategist, or you can have a defined role as actually, you know, an ads manager. They just weren't things. We That's did it why all. We've, we've, well, we've, we've got all of those, yeah. we've, got, we've got bits of all of those skills because it was necessary because the platforms were evolving along with our careers. So it's, this is, this is what we, I think we've, this lost on us in a way. These platforms are still incredibly new, you know, incredibly new. And, you know, I liken the evolution of social video to the evolution of uh, television. You know, radio was, you know, when television programs first started, you had someone effectively broadcasting into a microphone but filmed so sitting there behind the desk speaking into a microphone 
And then what we did when social video landed, we went, oh, we'll just click up TV programs and throw them on the social. And they go, well, why isn't that working? Well, there's a bloody good reason why it's not working. Because that is not the convention. You know, you're not, it's, TV is a lean back medium. You sit there, you let it wash over you. You rarely change the channel. You know, you punch when it wash, you sit there, it washes over you. Social is a lean forward medium. You go, what's next? What's next? I'm bored by this, you know? You're looking for a thumb stocking moment. So I sort of deviated a little bit there, but what I would say to young social managers and people starting out is, is, is get yourself involved in, with, with people who have knowledge, you know, get a mentor who's in the industry, understand, you know, the, the ramifications of, of doing the dark arts properly slash correctly slash not well, um, you know, learn because, it, it's you've talked about this in in a in a in a piece we did in the in a session we did in the past hell and it's it's resonated with me this has really resonated with me of all the things you've ever said this one particular thing has resonated with me oh. i threw out the i threw out the idea that um you know you could uh that that you could i could give you you know i i i maintain there's a recipe to viral social we can talk about that again if you like but i maintain there's an absolute recipe to it. it's really straightforward when you learn what it is but I could give someone a recipe book, you know, I'd give someone a Jamie Oliver cookbook and I could say, now, you know, you, you cook that. And, but they're never going to cook restaurant quality food without, as you've said in the past, practice. And it's, you've got to practice. You've got to be, you've got to understand social. You've got to, you've got to involve yourself in it. You can never be a good community manager or a strategist without having an understanding of what people, what, what makes the platforms and the people who use them, the algorithms tick. Yeah. Because if you don't have that knowledge, and if you don't, you know, ingest and invest in that knowledge, you're never going to be as, as valuable to an organization or to your clients as you could be. So that's what I would say in brief, that. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> I love it. I do love it because I think it's a big issue around confidence. So a lot of the people that we train in the Social Media Managers Academy come and they're talented and they've got loads of good ideas but their confidence when it comes to publishing it is isn't as strong as they'd like it to be and a lot of this comes from not really having that practice and not using their own twitter channel and facebook page and just testing stuff out on their friends and trying out things and i i think i said this to you before as well around if i wasn't embarrassed by what i was doing last year and back in the days of MySpace now, I don't feel like I would have made progress. You know, you, you want to look back and think that was shocking. I've learned yeah. so much since because you don't get that, you know, no, you're absolutely right. Textbooks, Making doesn't... mistakes in public is actually quite healthy for a social media manager. Um, it's how you deal with it and tackle it and, and make amends from it and learn from it is the most yeah. important thing. Um, God, I've made that. mistakes. I made some crushing mistakes on BBC accounts, you know, I once published a video of my dog running around the park through the BBC Wales Vine account at six o'clock in the morning. I mean, you know, Vine was new at that point. Vine has since gone. Big mistake in my eyes, but then we won't talk about that bit. Um, but yeah, I published that. And I don't think anyone saw it, thankfully. I deleted it pretty quickly. But again, I mean, no, had I done that, you know, in these days when people are a lot more informed, it would have been the world would have been crashing down around me. Oh my me. God. Oh, and you'd have your own day, wouldn't you? People would ah, commemorate it. With I have an Ed Balls day. Dog every yeah. day. Yeah. Absolutely. <laughs> I, yeah, it would it'd develop, you know, it would develop. I mean, I've, I've tweeted Ed Balls from the BBC World's Camp in the past on Ed Balls Day. And for those people who, who are new to this idea, Ed Balls was a, a cabinet minister in the Labour Party in the UK government. And uh, he, he tweeted Ed Balls, having been searching for himself somewhere. And ever since then, and I think it's I think it's in June every year, it's it's Ed Balls Day on Twitter. Well, I published uh, just an, just a tweet that said BBC Wales through the BBC Wales account on that day. And it was incredibly meta. You know, you had to know social to understand what was going on. And I confess it, colleagues come to me, you know, you just published BBC Wales. And yeah, yeah, I do. It's because it's because I understand there's an audience there who will go, you get it, you get it. Um, well, but it's about your mindset with that now, because you work for the BBC and as we... Used to, uh, used to, not used anymore. To, so not you anymore. did work for the BBC at the time that you tweeted that. You look at my very um, political tweets now, I don't know anymore. <laughs> oh yeah, I love them. <laughs> um, thinking about that, and I've got this background where I've worked with loads of public services and charities as well, and you always get this feeling from from social media managers as well as we can't do anything everything's got to get signed off and often 
if you're waiting for sign off, you're waiting for someone to approve something that they don't understand. So it's going to be very difficult. And in that case, that's a really good example of it. By tweeting just BBC Wales, you must have over you must have just jumped over those approval barriers and just done well, it anyway. Yeah, although the caveat this way, the approval barrier was me. Yeah. So I didn't just have, did you know, now I, I, you know, I don't know what it's like now, but I would hazard there are, uh, there were multiple Word docs or Excel docs or God forbid Google docs. Um, hopefully they're Google docs, um, <laughs> but I just don't think the BBC works that way. Um, <laughs> but hopefully there are multiple sort of uh, ways of working. I mean, but again, it comes down to that idea that I mentioned earlier. If you don't, if you have people who are in charge of social accounts who don't truly understand social and who don't, um, you know, and, and who don't live and breathe social, then what are you doing? You know, how, why is this business being run like this? Why are you, it, I mean, it's called social media. It's not just called broadcast media. Broadcast media is everything else uh, a, a broadcaster does. Social media is distinct, is a distinct, out, a piece of, a distinct output channel. It's, it's marketing, yes, it's comms, yes, but it's something beyond and to the side of all of that as well. It incorporates all of those elements. It incorporates promotional elements. It incorporates all of those things. But it's best when it's used to directly engage an audience. And I've, I've said for a long time, if you're going to publish content on Facebook in particular, and your intent is not to engage an audience emotionally, then what the bloody hell are you doing publishing that on Facebook? You know, unless you're spending a shed load of money behind it, spend a shed load of money behind it. And again, I'm not convinced that's the best answer. I always think something needs some organic reach prior to putting paid, prior yeah. to putting paid support behind it. Nevertheless, um, there will be ad managers who wrong do that, that case to me. But I just don't think it's the best tactic. You, you want organic reach and you want that unfolding organic reach. You want, that, you want organic reach that is, that is constant. I mean, yes, there will be pieces of content that you publish that will be topical and timely. But... The truth is, the best content exists for all time. Is evergreen. Is legacy. Um, it's legacy content that exists for now and forever, and can always be picked up. Can always be, you know, can always be adopted and and adapted and and lifted, and, and just is makes people feel when they look at it. To make people feel something, because emotion fundamentally is at the heart of why we engage with content and social. And if you can't look through your audience's eyes. If you can't, you know, associate with what your audience will derive from the content you publish, then you're doing social wrong. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, I think it's the looking, it's the empathy. We, we always call it obsessive, radical empathy with your audience. Yes. So the right. The idea of thinking about your audience is difficult because if you have got, like, if you're not at the, the top of the decision tree when it comes to social and you've got someone going, you know, like the chief exec goes, I don't like it. Yeah. And you're like, yeah, but it's not for you. It's for our audience. For who them. Like it. Yeah. Yeah. Yep. I, it yep. can be tough because it takes a bit of um, guts, doesn't it, to kind of have that conversation. It is tough. But again, you, I mean, you know, people will, people will volunteer the idea of A-B testing. But A-B testing is, is fraught with difficulties because you've got to publish the same thing twice with minor differences. Or otherwise, it's not A-B testing. It's, it's not, you know, it's, you're not being data-led. What you need to do... No, not it's not A B testing. Present to people the data to support your arguments. Yeah. That's the only way you'll get your senior managers on board. This pound for pound is more engaging than this. And the reasons for it are these editorial reasons that I'm coming up oh. with here. And the reason this doesn't work is because of this. I'm you can so only do that and you can only build sorry, say Dan. I'm so behind you on that. This idea of A B testing gives credibility to the idea that the other idea is worth testing if that makes sense. So yes, you know, yes. I'm telling you, I know my yes. audience and this is what they'll want, yes. but if you put this dry piece of corporate crap out, then I'm not going to test that. You need to just take it as red. Yeah. Yeah, of course. And, and, and also the good enough syndrome. Oh, that's good enough. It, but it's not, it's just not, it needs to be the best thing it can be. Otherwise let's not do it. You know, I would rather see, you know, I, I, I'd rather see, you know, that there's people talk about an 80-20 split. They talk about this idea of, you know, 80% of what we do at the moment is good and 20% of what we do isn't. So less or less than 20%. That's honourable. But I'd argue it's more probably 20-80%. 20% of what you do is good and 80% of what you do isn't. So drop the 80%. Just do more of what you do well all the time. Beautiful. Yes, that's what it's I do. not hard. Uh, you're just going to look at the data and go, well, this isn't working. Drop it. And you should have... 
you know, a really good agency has, has, well, has the agency to be able to say, this stuff we thought would work isn't working. So case in point, I'll, I'll go back to my, my experience. When I was at BBC One, one of the, the biggest things I ever did was, um, was a, a series called Big Cats. And I know as a, as a cat person yourself, you will be well across. You are a cat person. I, I, um, it's it's much, in there somewhere. Yeah, yeah. Okay. So I did this, we did a series called Big Cats and I took ownership of it as, as social media, as social media lead at BBC One. And I started off with this idea that we would be, because I was working with the NHE, when I was working with BBC Marketing Creative, there would be, I thought, I'll play this straight now as a new guy come from Wales. I'll play it quite straight and I'll do um. I'll do it sort of scientific basis. I'll I'll take the science of it because you know Blue Planet is really big and they they that from an angle. They they love that kind of thing. They love the science. So I'll I'll, I'll invoke the science in this. But at the same time, I was saying you know I was presented with these concepts for video content. They're effectively square cuts of trailers for TV. I was like, no no no, I've watched it. Can we read it? Put the tiny cat at the start. That will really get the audience invested. You know, as opposed to a lion just trekking across the the savannah at the start because that's not going to be as effective as this tiny cat emerging from under a leaf oh my god um that's that's what you want to convey and i said to the natural history unit guys because they were often effectively effectively the same thing as creative no, 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 no creative give me reasons to watch the television program but energy do not give me reasons to watch the television program i can do that on social add value above and beyond to this brand so that it exists for all of time and you can be invested in this piece of content, whether or not you've seen the television program. Yeah. Lo and behold, the trailer's got like two, three million views because it's time specific. The value added content has over 120 million views and counting at each, and there are multiple pots of it. So that amongst them, you're talking maybe 500 million views between these pieces of content that were for a television program that was on for about three weeks, you know? So that in itself is, what was my what was my point I was making? I think the point I was making was that um, they, you know, I I readjusted the language. That was it. I readjusted the language I was using in week one, because I had gone down this scientific bent, and actually what the audience wanted to say was, "Oh my God, it's a floof! It's a tiny little floof!" And I went, "It's right. I'm just gonna just gonna go with it." And I was doing stuff like, "Oh my God." Look at this. Uh, it, was, it was like, oh my God, it's the world's deadliest cat. Look at her heart eyes emoji. And that's the copy. That's the copy. All of the how to watch it for the details, all of that stuff is in the comment tree below the video because that video is the thing that drives the audience. Yeah. That video and the copy above it is the key thing. And this was one of the, I know this is one of the takeaways that the wider team around me took away was why are we putting like, what time it's on in the main copy why not just add that in the comment tree and then why not we we literally employed community manager as a result of this of these posts that i was doing because everyone could see the value of the comment tree on facebook because in there i could put links to further programming i could put other other pieces of content people might have missed i could respond and react to people with gifts and i've got this whole presentation that i do called fluke power I know, but oh. kill me later. Um, I do this whole presentation on just this content and and what I did with it and how I turned it into something above and beyond um, just a, a, a sort of staid promotional aspect for a TV show that was on for a few weeks on TV and BBC One. But how to how to manifest how to manifest more resonance amongst a, a, a niche but very large niche audience as a result I, love it. I, I didn't I, I would really like you to do that whole deck for me personally please I, <laughs> I'd be delighted yeah. but we teach this actually on the in the social media academy so it, we call it flipping the story so instead of it being your story that you want to tell people you flip it to the audience and kind of go what would you like it's to all talk about, about them today? we it's can all get about in the them. comments and tell you yeah. about what we're going to talk about afterwards but let's talk about what you want to talk about yeah. and and see if that conversation will kind of and, go in the direction we want it to go. And audiences, and you can do this so simply, whether it's through gift, gifting them a gift or or just or conversing with them or giving them some information that they didn't know. And you know, when you run a social campaign, you need to know the facets, or at least you need to understand who you can reach out to to say to you, oh no, this is this is what this means. So for example, 
someone said, um, what kind of cat is that in the gift? And I said, well, it's a uh, Steve Phillips, because I remember his name. I said, Steve Phillips, that is a carhal, carhal. It's a, it's a, it's a carousel cat from the, Mexico, I think, South America somewhere. Uh, and it can leap, you know, it can leap straight up in the air to a height of like 10 foot and can catch birds in flight. So I, I knew this because I'd looked at the, the notes from the Natural History Unit and I'd read up on it and I could reach out to people. You know, it's when I was at BBC Wales, you know, someone said, why are you publishing this video of, of uh, the Seven Bridge? Because we had this amazing footage of the top of the Seven Bridge between England and Wales. An amazing view, and someone said, "Why are you why are you making this show when not one foot of the Seven Bridge is in Wales?" And I thought, "You're right, you know, it's in Gloucestershire, all in Gloucestershire. The entirety of the Seven Bridge lands that start and lands in Gloucestershire, and um, people don't know that, but it's true." And I was able to say to him, "Well, it's because of trade, and you know, it has a major impact on South Wales economy." And I checked out with the commissioner, and he went, "Fair point, well made." I was like, "That's that's it. That's." You're answering, you're informing, you're identifying with that person, and you just, you know, you're emoting to them as well. You're just saying, look, this is the reason, this is why we're doing what we're doing, or um, this is the answer to your question. It's just, I call it digital kudos. Um, people love to be noticed. And also, you can elevate really positive comments on Facebook and on Twitter by engaging with them through your brand account. And you elevate that stuff and it pushes down the negative stuff. So having an, having um, having that, that community manager at the heart of your team or having that ability to associate with that content is really, really important and shows and displays that love of brand towards, this sounds really woolly, but you know what I mean. It, it, it displays that, 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 that attention you have not only to detail, but to your audience as well. It's so, so important. So important. You want to be cared for. Yeah, and it, like I like conversations. I, I'm not so into That's transactions. It. And That's when, it. when a body just gives a message at me, it's not half as emotional, memorable, interesting to me as when I have a conversation with a person. It comes um, back to it again. It, it's not social media. It, sorry, it is social. It's social media. Oh God, it is social media. It's. I mean, one. I do a presentation called um, called Brave the Tips, uh, the Tips, Tricks, and Strategies of Viral Content, and uh, and and in it, there's a slide that says, "Remember, it's not social media. It's selfish media. It's all about me, me, me. I, the audience. It's all about them. Uh, it's me, 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 media." It's all about them. How that 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 self identification, uh, that self gratification that they have, that that being able to view themselves through the prism of the content they've just engaged with, to show people when they share something that it is a it's an extension of self. That is what you're trying to do. You're trying to engage with people emotionally at all times. Yeah. You, you, you are trying to inform them, you are identifying with them in some way, but fundamentally you're engaging them emotionally. Like you talk about a lot, that empathy is so, so important. It's not, sorry, I say it's so, so important, like that's throwaway. It's not so, so important. It's fundamental to what the platform do. It's how do. you do it. It's how you, it's how you do yeah. it. Yeah. Otherwise, you're not doing it properly. <laughs> you're not doing it right. Are you just splurging money? <laughs> Well, talking of splurge of money, because time is money, and I've taken a lot of your time. You're, you're, all, you're so I welcome. Ask you. <laughs> I want to ask you, first of all, if you've got any advice or tips or things for social media managers to take away from your experience, please share those. And then the second thing is, what kind of stuff do you do and how might a social media manager might want to work with you in your awesome business? The sales tactic. I'm not really good at that one, so thank you for that. Oh, help. See, I did a plug for you. The opportunity. So start off with the um, advice. Everyone will go, oh, I want to do that, and then they'll start. Yeah, yeah, yeah. They'll I appreciate that. So, um, what would I, what would I recommend? So, so it's, uh, so a lot of what I've talked about now is about is about having that empathy and about um, finding a niche and going with the niche. You know, you can you can have niches and social that are actually remarkably large. You know, there are remarkably large communities that they're looking for for small cat related content and it's you know it, once you can find that niche you will yeah. it will be with you forevermore because oh, they will drink it in. yeah it? bbc one can be turned into bbc one on facebook or twitter go and search out big cats by the way uh, have a look D don't search out big cats because i forgot to use that hashtag in the tweet itself <laughs> um but um 
which is good in a way because it was just what it was. It was just a just a yeah. rusty piece of content. Oh, but have a look on Twitter for uh, Twitter. It's sort of a six, five, six million views. That piece of video. It's on Facebook as well. But have a look for uh, this is the world's deadliest cat. Seriously, look at it. That's that's my that's my brain working. Okay. Right. So right. so that's park that bit. So what I would say, I run a I run a a, 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 a pitch. A, a pitch. What am I talking about? I run a presentation called Heartbeat Frequency. And it's about the rhythm, the power of the rhythm of social video. Um, so I haven't talked about this a little bit, but if you're ever making social video, remember the first three to 10 seconds are the gold dust. If you can't impress upon people the need to continue watching the first three to 10 seconds, those 5 million video views you got mean nothing. Because if you're 5 million individuals who tuned in for three seconds and not watching for the first 10 seconds to find out what the purpose of the video was in the first place, you've not gained anything. You've just got shiny numbers that look yeah. nice when you talk to your MD. And hey, that might be all you want. That might be all you want, but that is not good social video content. So you've got to think about the rhythm, the beats in the social video that actually propel an audience along. And that's not purely about um, the narrative use of the text on screen, because remember, 85% of people don't bother turning the sound on. So give them a reason to turn the sound on. Actually have a narrative. Uh, have a narrative point of view in there as well, not purely just subs on screen. And for God's sake, if you're making video for social, square or vertical, because that actually helps fill up your screen real estate. Um, don't make your subs so small you have to zoom in to read it, because that's stupid. Don't make your, don't make your, don't have to do that. You don't want anyone to do that. You want to keep it vertical if you can. So screen real estate is so important. Keep your subs quite large. But rhythm, Rhythm is manifestly important. It's that soft changes every three to six seconds, something to keep people going along with it. You've got to craft and design video content for social. You've also got to have copy that really engages an audience. Again, I come back to it, really engages an audience emotionally because otherwise you're not doing it right. And remember, you can turn anything into a thread on Twitter or on Facebook. I mean, Facebook threads are more difficult. I'm talking about the commentary here. But put the further detail in the thread or in the, or the tree underneath. Because actually, you know, the algorithm does not favor you sending people off site in the initial tweet or in the initial piece of copy. So just think about your audience's journey as a result of having experienced this video content, you know, and don't wait until 30 seconds to a minute in to hammer home what the purpose of the video is in the first place, if indeed you're selling something. Um, so that's that's my pitch in terms of in terms of what you need to do to you know what you need to do to hammer that message home what you need to do that my prime piece of prime piece of advice um oh, that is but i would say um i would say in terms of how to work with me drop me a tweet um uh, you can dm me as well i had a at a, at a government organization dm me yesterday just apropos of nothing having seen something that i've written they were like oh do you do any training yes i do funny enough I used to do training for BBC Academy, I do training for all sorts of sectors. Um, but we make content as well. I mean, I set out to be a, I set my company up to be a sort of a boutique consultancy. We had so much work in the first six months to take on five people to do all the work. It was insane. <laughs> um, COVID seen to that, though. It seen to that. Um, they were all freelance. Don't worry, I didn't sack them. Um, but the, uh, I would say, drop me a, drop me a tweet, um, O's Wills, and I'm sure hell, you, you're going to put my handle up on. I'm just, I'm say, I'm just going to force you to do it now. When any literature that goes along with this, I'm, yeah, I'm please do. Um, O's Wills on Twitter, O W S W I W L S. That's O W S W I W L S. Um, we do so much. We work, we work with uh, broadcasters and agencies and third sector to make video content for them that's designed in a way that um that that takes on board the best of social and the best of social you know uh, dynamics um we do a lot of talks i do a lot of zoom talks um you can see quite a few of mine on on social if you go into the similar social account and have a look um there's you know i do these sort of things a lot i talk with i talk to chief execs about what they need to do to improve their social offer and how they can bring about change in the organization um I've been around for a long time. It's polyfiller literally holding the space together. <laughs> uh, but yeah, it, or a spackle if you're American, I gather. Um, oh, that never makes no that sense. Um, spackle, yeah, they used to talk about friends all the time. Do you remember? Um, oh, that, that one spackle, over my head. Yeah, pretty sure it was called spackle in the States. I, I look Someone like I've got a spackle like. holding me up because I'm just kind of ghostly white. I'm going to put on fake tan for the lives. You are, you're yeah. blending in really well right now, Hal. Are you saying I'm green? Uh, is that green? <laughs> oh, shoot. <laughs> 
I'm mildly colorblind, so forgive me. Um, no, I am so white, I'm nearly green. I, I do, you've, you've been framed rather well there as well. I just think you just for coming on it. Just done my, just done, just, just sort my framing out here. Um, <laughs> <laughs> I, uh, yeah, I, I, I have nothing else to say. I'm not very good. I'm very good at selling the principles of social, but it's turned out before I was running my own business, I'm not so good at selling what I do. And I've learned this. Yeah, it's a difficult Terrible, thing. isn't it? It's really difficult. I don't know if it's a British thing or if it's just a general, people who were like, used to working with other people and promoting their brands, that yeah. when it comes to promoting your own, you're like, there's a bit of a... Well, I don't know what my I don't know what my sales gig is. I'm like a I'm like a Swiss Army knife social, I guess. I don't know what the I don't know what the I don't know what my sell is because I don't actually edit anything myself. You know, I don't actually edit video content because I bring people in to do that stuff to my to my exacting specifications. But yeah, what's what's, what's, what's been so? But what's so lovely though, and what's so lovely is when you work with a client who just goes, "Well, you tell me," and I go, oh, "Okay then." Um, and then what we do, we worked with a client a few weeks ago, and they they were amazing. We they wanted a 10 minute long video for you, the YouTube channel. So we made this 10 minute long video, but we had so much time on our hands. We made three social cuts, two blooper reels, and we delivered them 40 uh, high quality skills as well. And they were, they were just like, so they were happy. Oh my God. <laughs> yeah. I mean, I know that that 10 minute video, you can't do anything with that on social. You can't put that on Twitter because it ain't going to work. So here is a version for Twitter. I think that's that. so valuable as well. I think a lot of people don't realise the the scale and creativity that goes into making social video. And a lot oh, of yeah. you know, a lot of the brands that I will work with will, you know, they'll want to make their own videos and sometimes they can be really creative. But a lot of the time the brief is make us a video, the chief exec will be there, do a talking head, uh, you know, maybe get some drone footage of above above the building and cut that uh, together and it makes you know the what? most boring corporate video you can ever have. Absolutely. And sometimes it can work. Um, more often than not, it doesn't. The, the truth is, though, what I so often find when I do these talks is that I talk about this holy trinity of social. Information, how a piece of content better informs me, content or messaging better informs me about the world around me. Again, selfish media. Um, identity. How a piece of content and or messaging better informs me about myself. And emotion, how a piece of content makes me feel. And when you can get all three of those or two of them together into a piece of content, you are effectively manifesting virality. You are creating a viral moment through the dint of information identity in motion. Think about all the videos you've seen that have gone viral. Think about a viral hit you've had. It's because it had those pillars it had those verticals embedded within that content but yeah. you've got to have the copy to drive people towards it as well so you could be it's just a creative process all the time you've got to have those three sort of pillars at your disposal you could be thinking about those things because otherwise you're just creating video you're not creating social video anyone yeah. can create video i can i can film you now when it's a video it doesn't necessarily mean it's good social video though not yeah. designed for audiences to directly engage with them to want to share because again I come back to the idea if you're not creating video that's if you're creating video that's not designed to be engaged with or shared you know what the bloody hell are you doing publish it on social media <laughs> yeah well on that note i'm gonna say leave a comment and ask any questions that you want of Oh, and I haven't asked if he will do this but i'm gonna try and you haven't asked if i will do it of course questions. i will now you've asked and slide into his DMs and see if you can commission him. I think he's going to be inundated now that the COVID kind of panic is over. Yeah, um, you say that. <laughs> and <laughs> we'll thank see. you very much. Thank you so much for taking part in this. You're welcome. Thank you, I man. gave you like three seconds notice. So it's amazing you're that you're able to come and join me. It's always Anytime. good chatting to you. Thank you very much. Take care.